All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ellie Park, and with the mentoring of Grace McIntyre, I'll be speaking today about the ABCC11 gene and its impact on human physiology and breast cancer. To begin, for a little introduction about who I am, I am a Korean American attending my senior year at Desert Mountain High School here in Arizona. In my free time, I enjoy drumming for my church youth band, and I have been a dancer for around eight years now. I'm also currently working as a barista slash cashier at my local cafe. Now, for a brief agenda of today's presentation, we will be talking a little bit about the inspiration for this project, the research question, breast cancer, ABCC11, the relationship between the two, potential research and future direction, and finally, a conclusion. Now, it all started the day I walked into the girls' gym locker room. My friends and I had just finished an extensive cardio workout, and I wish I was exaggerating when I said my eyes started to water due to the pungent smell of high school body odor. As I soon began to smell the floral and musky fragrances from the deodorants, I asked myself why I had never bought one before, or better yet, why I never needed one. Being one of the very few Eastern Asians in a gym full of Caucasians, I thought about my family and realized that no one that I knew of my same ethnicity had the need to purchase these products. And so I wondered, what genetic differences could exist between these two ethnicities that could drive the need to purchase certain deodorants? In some brief research, I discovered that the ABCC11 gene is differentially expressed between Western Caucasians and Eastern Asians. Today, I'm really excited to dive more into this gene and how changes in its genotype lead to different phenotypic expressions across populations. And so began the genesis of this project and my intellectual curiosity for the ABCC11 gene. Now, for the big question, how do gene variations of ABCC11 contribute to breast cancer progression? And don't fret, by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to connect earwax, body odor, and risk for breast cancer. First, to really grasp the seriousness of cancer, in general, as of 2023, there are approximately 19.3 million new cancer cases globally with an estimated 10 million deaths. Domestically, there are approximately 1.9 million new cases with around 600,000 cancer deaths in the US, modeled by this infographic. For breast cancer in specific, the most common cancer in women, as of 2023, there are an estimated 2.3 million cases, which make up around 11.7 7% of cancer cases globally. Domestically, there are about 300,000 new cases with an additional 55,700 non-invasive cases. In the US, one in every eight women develop a category of breast cancer. This graph here depicts the rate of breast cancer incidence per 100,000 people. It is interesting to note that those living in European regions have a far greater rate of incidence compared to those in Asia. Now, what is breast cancer? breast cancer and why is it important? Breast cancer can be defined as a tumor originating in the cells of the breast. It primarily affects women, but can also occur in men. Some environmental factors include diet and obesity, alcohol consumption, radiation exposure, and a lack of physical activity. Some genetic factors also include BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, family history, hormonal factors such as early menstruation or late menopause, and what we will be mainly discussing today, gene variants such as ABCC11. So what is ABCC11? Or what is ABCC11 versus ABCC11? And don't worry, that'll make sense in a minute. I'm talking more about the protein versus the gene. The ABCC11 gene, or the ATP binding cassette transporter subfamily C member 11, hence its name, is located on chromosome 16 on humans and encodes a protein that is part of the ATP binding cassette transporter family. It functions as a transporter for lipophilic compounds across the cellular membrane, and this diagram here depicts one of the basic functions of the ABCC11, aiding in the secretion of sweat in the apocrine glands, which makes sense of my story earlier. However, the aspect of this gene that makes it so important and so interesting is its single nucleotide polymorphism that changes the glycogen to an argon. The different genotypes this SMP accounts for are GG, GA, and AA. ABCC11 has a very interesting SMP, or like I said, single nucleotide polymorphism, which has a change in the nucleotide in the allele from A to G, which allows this gene to possess three morphism. This diagram here shows a typical and variant expression of the gene during the process of sweat production. The wet type or wet earwax type producing normal apocrine secretion and the dry variation producing the degradation of apocrine secretion. Going onward on my path of research, 
In learning, I am hoping to write a literature review to answer the question of how does the S&P, specifically RS1782931, contribute to changes in ABCC11 and ultimately towards breast cancer carcinogenesis. Furthermore, can genet genetic variation in the ABCC11 gene be used to stratify patients and identify potential therapeutic opportunities for breast cancer patients? This SMP change from G to A creates three different possible genotypes, all of which express different phenotypes. For example, the AA variant expresses phenotypes in dry earwax, odorless body odor, and get this, a lower risk of breast cancer. However, both the GA and GG variant is, so is associated with wet earwax and typical, if not worse, body odor due to the result of more active apricot sweat, gl sweat glands. The real takeaway is the increased expression of breast cancer within the, the G dominant phenotypes. It is interesting to note that the AA variant is more prevalent in East Asian countries as opposed to the high European and African expression of the GA and GG variant. This slide is a visual representation or genome model of the ABCC11 and the exact location of the SMP. We can see here that it's located on the fourth. Putting two and two together, ABCC11 is expressed in mammary tissues and may influence the secretion of lipids and other molecules in breast cells, impacting cellular processes related to cancer development. The specific SMP in the ABCC11 gene has also been linked to different phenotypes, including earwax type and auxiliary order, but also to breast cancer risk in certain populations. This graph shown on the slide supports this fact by showing that there are far more patients with breast cancer with expression of GG and GA alleles compared to AA. Research also suggests that ABCC11 expression may interact with estrogen receptor, or ER, status in breast cancer with possible implications of ER-positive breast cancer sub types. Many crucial potential research directions and future applications of ABCC11 can help bring new ideas and innovations to breast cancer treatment and personal health. Firstly, using ABCC11 polymorphisms, specifically the SNP that I spoke earlier about today, as a genetic marker in panels to assess individual breast cancer risk, especially in populations where this gene variant is prevalent and could aid in diagnosis. We can incorporate ABCC11 genotyping in personalized health assessments to, identi to identify individuals who might benefit from early screening or preventive me measures for breast cancer. We could create targeted therapies by developing or optimizing therapies targeting ABCC11 related pathways, particularly in the ER positive breast cancer, where ABCC11 may play a significant role. And we could also imply hormonal therapies by investigating the role of ABCC11 in modulating responses to hormonal therapies such as tax, uh, ta tamoxifen to enhance treatment outcomes for ER positive breast cancer patients. These directions can advance the integration of ABCC11 into personalized medicine approaches, improving breast cancer pre prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. To conclude on ABCC11 and its connection to breast cancer and other human uh, functions, ABCC11 is a gene encoding a protein involved in the transport of molecules across the cellular membrane, impacting various physiological functions, including sweat and earwax production. The ABCC11 gene, particularly the RS1782293 polymorphism has been linked to breast cancer risk and the connection between ABCC11 and breast cancer risk appearing to be population specific, suggesting a need for targeted genetic studies and screening strategies in high risk groups. Variants of ABCC11 may impact the efficacy of breast cancer treatments, especially hormonal therapies, offering a pathway to more personalized treatment options. In the end, my inquiries on why I never needed deodorant has led me to offer further questions and ideas on the topic of breast cancer and other human physiological functions. My name is Ellie Park, and thank you for listening to 2024 Polygence Symposium. Thank you.